Well, let's take a look at some of the items we're going to use here. What I have is one kit I got from online. Uh, you can do a search for deer foot gun rack and uh, pull up a few choices. Uh, this is a kit. I think it's about 30, 40, uh, maybe 50 bucks with shipping. Um, so you'll need a, a kit if you want one. It comes with the uh, board and everything. We'll open that up in a minute. You're going to need some uh, modeling clay, pottery clay. This is some air dry. Uh, it's 10 or 15 bucks, I believe, for a 10 pound uh, bag like this. Get it at your local uh, art supply or, or a hobby shop. Um, you need some needle and thread. I like to use a good curved needle or uh, something like this and just some some tan thread uh, and a small weight. So we'll put that aside for a second. Uh, also, of course, you'll need some deer legs. These that have already been tanned. Uh, if you check out some of my tanning videos, uh, you'll see how I tan. This is done the same way. Uh, now for the rack, for the gun rack, I'm actually working on two projects. I'm doing a gun rack and I'm doing a gun leg lamp. So if you're interested in the, uh, the lamp, you can check that out also. But these two hides here are going to be used for the gun rack. So what you do is uh, just take your your deer leg, you'll cut it off at the uh, first joint here. Here's first joint. You just split it down the middle. Now if you're doing a gun rack, you're going to want to split it down the back side. Uh, actually, I think. Uh, I think you split it down the back side for both the gun rest and the, uh, the lamp. Uh, these are split down the front. I'm going to see how it turns out, see if you can tell if it makes a difference. But uh, that's all you need. Just skin it out. Uh, they have the little dew claws here. You'll skin that down and then just uh, either cut it with your knife or some pliers. You'll skin it all the way down to the I guess what's considered a knuckle here right in front of the claw. Uh, and then you'll cut that off as well. So that's what you'll end up with. And you tan the whole thing. You, you'll tan it for two days in your solution. Take it out, scrape it, uh, and then put it in for another week. Refresh your solution. Uh, let it set for uh, a few more days. And you'll take it out. And this is the condition it'll be in ready to, to use for whatever, either lamp or like we're going to do in this video, a gun rack. So let's take a quick look at what comes in a gun rack kit. Uh, you open it up, you'll get some instructions. It tells you how to uh, take the hide off, uh, debone it, and it'll actually come with uh, some tanning solution, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Come a little bag of tanning solution if you want to follow the instructions or if you want to use my method. Uh, totally up to you. So we'll put that aside. Uh, it comes with all the hardware you need. A uh, couple screws, uh, some wall hangers to hang it on the wall when you're done. And it also comes with the uh, foot molds. We'll take a look at those in a second. Um, I didn't see any different sizes. The leg lamps, when you look at those, they'll actually have a, a large, medium, or small leg molds. Uh, this was a one size. So I've, uh, I've already opened this box and I've started. You can see the difference. I've had to uh, whittle down uh, the legs with a, uh, a rasp. And I'll show you how to do that so you can get a good fit. Um, and then we'll also use some modeling clay to get a, get a good fit. Um, but it's real easy to do. It takes a few minutes with a rasp. But what happens is uh, you put your, your legs on there. 
and that'll actually fit around your leg so you'll get a good nice clean look as you uh, mount it to the board. And then it also comes with a placard or a uh, board. Um, so you'll have to tap the holes on that uh, as well and mount the hardware. So it's just a, a press board with a laminate grain on it. Uh, looks pretty good, not too bad. So throw this back in the box and we'll get started with the uh, with the legs here. All right, so we have the two leg molds or hoof molds, whatever you want to call them. Then uh, we have our two legs. So, like I mentioned, the wasn't a sizing chart or anything when I ordered these, uh, or at least none that I, I noticed. Um, so, if your legs are a little small like mine were, don't worry. Uh, you can pick you up a uh, wood rasp for a few dollars, local hardware store, a big box store. Uh, and this actually makes short work of uh, whittling this down. You can see there's probably a, a half inch difference in the height. Um, I'll show you how they're supposed to fit together. Uh, the hoof should be pointed out when you put these on. Um, so what they're going to do is you're going to put the, the foot on the end like that and just kind of roll the skin down onto it. You line up your your small, uh, I think those are called dew claws here. You're going to line them up and then you just kind of file it down or rasp it down until you can take that and close your close your hide around it. You see that's getting getting pretty close. So I may actually may actually have a little bit more to do, but I think that's getting pretty close. What we'll do is uh, we'll take the bobbin clay here, and this is hard to see, but this is hollow in here because we have our our hoof on as far as we can get it. What we'll do is we'll fill in the little gap, little spaces in between with the modeling clay and it'll give us a really good fit. You can see, uh, go ahead and take this down a little bit with the rasp. Kind of show you how, how easy that is. You need just a little bit throughout here. See if we can get a better fit on that. And you'll do, of course, do the same thing with the other one, but for time's sake, I'll just show you one. So we want to take a little bit off across the edge here, across the top, and allow us to close that that opening a little bit better. I'm just going to kind of work it back and forth, and you'll see the shavings start coming off, just like if it was wood. said it's really really does a good job not very not very hard to do at all um, we'll take a look at that real quick that probably be it You gotta remember this is gonna shrink a little bit whenever it dries, so you don't want it too tight. Maybe if anything, maybe a little loose. Yeah, I'm gonna pull on for pulling on that hide, it'll it'll snug up good. So I think that's it. We're gonna go ahead and go with that. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure and test fit it. You wanna line up this this bottom crease here. That's gonna be in the middle. And uh, go ahead and pull off some clay here and, and put it in there and get ready to sew this up. And we're just about done.
Before I go too much further, I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, rasp here, and I'm going to go ahead and whittle my legs down to match. That way I can use this one as a uh, kind of as a guide. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and file it down and make sure I get the same, uh, about the same thickness and, and width. Just using that rasp, just working back and forth. It comes off pretty good. It's kind of hard to do on the table. You either put it on your uh, lap and just kind of just kind of work it. I'll do this for a few minutes until I get about the same thickness, uh, same width, not far off here, and I'll come back after we're done. All right, got those whittled down now, about the same size, same dimensions. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fix our first leg. Uh, go ahead and take some putty, or some clay rather. I'm going to just pinch off a little bit. And I'm going to put that on each side here in the little cavity, kind of fit it around the bone on each side. And then uh, we'll also put a little bit around the uh, dew claw joints as well. And um, kind of work that in and then get a better fit on our, on our mount here. I'm going to push that in the, in the mount. Nothing special. You see it kind of fills up the, kind of fills out the uh, hoof area as opposed to it being flat on this section. It's kind of like filling up the finger on a glove. We don't want to over, we don't want to over stuff it. You want to kind of push, push it flat. And keep in mind that it's going to shrink a little bit just a touch when it dries. So push it in there. What we'll do is we'll work it. We'll work it in as we're uh, fitting it on the on the leg as well. I've got a good bit in there now. I want to make sure I don't overstuff it. I don't have to get it all over the hide or all over the, the hair. And we'll just start seeing how, seeing how it fits. Push it on as far as you can. Make sure you're your hooves are lining up. Pull that, uh, pull the hide down. Kind of keep everything symmetrical. Might have to roll it a little bit. No big deal. Hide still wet. The clay is moist. Just kind of pushing it and forming it to where things kind of look natural. Fit that hair, that hide together. Make sure the claws are okay. Just a little bit more. On the back side here. Those 
kind of stick out just the hair. Okay. Wrap that hide around it, make sure it's neat. You want to make sure your, your hairline is in the center. So we'll kind of roll that around where it matches up. And that's looking pretty good. And the instructions say actually when you're done to take some string or some tape or something, just kind of tie it from here to the back and then let it set and let it dry like that. So we'll we'll see how things go here when we're doing. Now what I'm gonna do is start taking that uh our thread and I've just got a single single line of thread. It's gonna start sewing this up. Some real thin thread. I'll, uh, I'll zoom in here and start showing you that. So I got my curved needle. I have uh, my thread through. It says real thin thread. It might have a little bit too much. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll put the first one, uh, first line through, and I'll tie a knot um, and then work from side to side, side to side, kind of pulling the hair through pulling the hair through the uh, thread as I go. So let's, let's take a look here. I'm going to start. I want to stay to the edge of the pot. I don't want to get real deep up in here. Uh, you know, come out way over here. I want to stay along the edges. Try not to poke myself. Pull that through. And just tie a knot to get things started. If you're a seamstress or a sewer and you know it better, Better way or better method, by all means, feel free to use that. I'm definitely not a seamstress, but this doesn't look bad when we're done. So we'll just take that. Let's say we'll. Pull out any hair as we go. So that's one side. We'll just alternate side to side and close that cut up. Pulling the hair out as we go. Back and forth. So take your time. Don't get in a rush. This is the step that's really going to count. Back and forth, side to side. I'll do one or two more, kind of see you. Let you see how it's going together, and then uh, 
Go ahead and come back. So you see we started started up here. Already done a couple of uh, a couple of knots. And this is gonna come out pretty good. Key is to make sure you pull your hair through through your stitches as you go. That's what's gonna that's what's gonna cover up your work and cover up the thread. So once that dries, you see our stitches started up here, once that dries, you're not gonna be able to tell. You're not gonna see anything. So we'll do one more. Working toward the outside of the cut. I like to kind of pull the pull the hide and then hold it with my thumb. Put it in the opposite side. That's why I like these circle needles. Allows me to get underneath there and grab the uh, grab the hide. All right. Okay, just putting the finishing touches on this uh, deer leg here. Put put the last stitch in, and then we're gonna put a knot in it. back through itself. Since you closed. Pull all the hair out here. Back and forth. And let's see here. And just put a couple hitches, half hitches in here. Cinch it up. Still want to take the uh, needle, pull the any hair out from your stitching. Kind of dress it up a little bit. I'm gonna take all this extra stand here in just a second. I'm gonna cut it off, wrap it around the end, and let it start drying. So you can see the uh, end of the mount is here. So this is gonna be. This will all be up against the wood. What we want to do is just trim a little bit, maybe a half an inch or so. We'll push that against the end of the mold. And I got a, a little washer here. We'll put that on, we'll tighten it up, and we'll let it go ahead and start drying. So I got my good little pair of scissors. 
Just want to go ahead and snip the excess hide here. This was a young doe that I killed, my first deer this year. Got on the lease, so I figured I would uh, let the hide uh, stretched out on the rack behind me. I'm tanning that. Uh, I figured I'd go ahead and, and save the legs. And I'm uh, doing a lamp kit and also a gun rack or a bow rack. I'm going to use it as a bow rack. Gun killed it, but really prefer to, uh, to hunt with a bow. So I'll be doing that a few more times before the season ends this year. Going out tomorrow. Supposed to be a little cooler weather. So we got that sewed up. Uh, you still see a little seam. I'm going to dress that up with the needle. Going to work the uh, the putty back into shape here. This is going to move around while you're sewing. You just push that back into shape. Kind of mold it up with your fingers. Get a nice natural look. Take those scissors. And shape that insert there. And a nice look. Want those hooves to be pointed upward. Kind of drawn together a little. So you can take some tape, some, some string. And put a piece of tape together like that. Let them dry. We'll see here. In a minute, we'll get that going. But you just want to kind of mold it in there. You got your your clay. It's gonna take probably a day or so. I usually bring it in the house. I'm bring these in the house, let them dry. So there's one set. Uh, you see that'll sit against the board. It'll sit in there like that. These are probably for a little bit bigger high, but they'll work just, just as good. So, that's one set done. So we're going to take the needle and uh, brush this out. And go back and uh, make sure all the hair is out the, the sewing. We'll brush that out real good. Once I start drawing, it'll, it'll close up pretty good. You won't be able to tell at all. Not bad. Looking good. Go ahead and set that one aside, and we'll start on the next one here. Get some putty in it. And same thing. We'll start getting it sewed up. All right. All right. Have both the uh, both the hooves on now. They're both fitted. We've got the washer and the nut on. Actually, I have the nut off, but we have the, uh, the washer on there. It's a good firm feel. So, once you have the uh, the putty and the moles uh, trimmed down, if you need to, uh, once you have that set, the next step you want to want to do is you're going to want to get these hooves to where they are set and even. Uh, they're at the right spacing. And you want to secure them either with a piece of tape or if you're having a hard time of them staying uh, staying straight, staying pointed up, uh, you can tie them from the hoof to the, uh, the rod. You're going to want to let these dry for about a week to get a good 
uh, a good set. That way they don't move. Um, so if you're having trouble getting them in the right position, what, what you can do is uh, I've got a piece of twine here. I put a loop in one end. You can see I'll slide that over the rod. And then we'll just take it, pass it around the hoof here. We'll come back. Kind of hold it with our fingers. If you got somebody to help you, it's even better. We'll just take a half hitch, put it around there, kind of snug it up until this lines up with the way you want it. Hold it with your finger, put another half hitch, snug it up, and we'll do one more. You just take that and set it aside for about a week. Let the hide dry out. And you'll let that mold cure as well. So we'll take these. We'll set them aside for a minute. And we'll look at our plaque. Okay, we have the plaque. This is the plaque that came with the kit that I had. Uh, what I did was I measured... This plaque is, uh, I think, 24. So I found a center, which was 12 inches. And then I took half of that, which was 6. And I just laid my gun across. And again, I laid my bow across to kind of see what that looks like. Um, and what I did was I found half of half, which was 6. That would give me the, uh, the, uh, the mounting sides kind of... Um, even on each side. Um, when I set my bow up there, it was a, my bow was a little bit wider, so I just I just went out an extra inch um, instead of the half of half of half to get a good a good feel. And I dropped down um, about an inch below center vertical as well. That way the uh, the gun and the and the bow wouldn't be sitting all the way at the top of the plaque. It would kind of be along the top. Or along the middle part. So, uh, depending on the placard you get, uh, you'll want to measure it also. And then all you do is take a, a normal drill, kind of tap you some two holes. Um, what I did on the back, um, I went ahead and drilled um, a drill bit the same size or a little bit bigger than the nut. Um, went ahead and just set the nut on there, and you can take the, the screw once you start screwing it in. It's going to suck that nut into the wood. So I, I countersunk it, uh, drilled it out about a about an inch. Because what I'm going to do is once I have the feet uh, secured through the wood, I'm going to take a hacksaw and just cut those off. That way they're flush. Went ahead and mounted my uh, mounted brackets just over where my bolts are going to come through. So I have all that lined up and it's ready to go. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, so I didn't waste time showing you that. So we have the plaque ready to go. Uh, my hooves are dry. So we'll go ahead and set them in here. You want to make sure to remember and put your decorative pieces on your hooves first. Let's see here. So it's going to go to the outside. We're just going to take it, screw it on just like a regular nut and bolt. Pretty straightforward at this point. It'll snug in. Give it maybe one more turn in there. Get it to line up. See on the back that net's countersunk in there. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, we have our decorative piece in the uh, correct place here. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Take that string off.
decorative piece and screw. So this really comes together pretty good. Uh, do recommend the kits. Uh, there was at least one or two different different styles that I found when I searched on the uh, on the internet. Um, I like this longer placard style better. They even have some if you're going to do a head mount. They have some that uh, come up a lot higher this way, and you can actually mount the head with the two hooves. So I. Uh, I may end up doing one of those later on. Snug that up real good. Make sure they're lined up. That's looking pretty good. And the um, trucks to say you can either glue these down or you can tack them down with a um, with a nail gun. I'm gonna go ahead and tack them down with a nail gun. And then uh, we'll cut off these these rods with a uh, hacksaw, and we'll be right back. We'll hang it up, see what it looks like. All right, we got the finished product. Uh, got it hanging on my. Uh, in my shed out here, just test it out, so you show you what it looks like. Uh, I'll put a rifle on it real quick, and I'll I'll hang a bow, just in case anybody's interested in the, uh, the difference. But that turns out pretty good, uh, especially for a I think it was maybe a forty dollar kit. Comes with everything you need. Uh, you just provide the deer feet. Um, I think it even comes with some needle and thread. I, I chose a smaller needle, but um, let's take a look real quick with a rifle. Actually sets pretty good. You can see that. Uh, displays well. It's got a good angle on it. So, turned out really nice. I'm pleased. Very pleased. Take a look at the bow real quick. And there we go. That is a deer leg gun rack slash bow rack. Do it yourself. Kit comes with everything you need, or uh, you can get your own placards. Um, so, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it.